Aromatic and fortified wines. Aromatic of flavored wines are one the oldest, alcoholic preparations known to man Hippocrates, for example, steeped herbs and flowers in wine to make medicine in the 4th century BC. In the most cases, aromatic wines are fortified with grape spirit. Aromatic wine is highly processed, so the character of the base wine is not apparent in the finished product. Vermouth. When it comes to cocktails, the most important of the aromatic wines is vermouth. The word vermouth comes from the German word wormu, for wormwood. Wormwood flavored wines are mentioned in the 17th century by Samuel Pepys in his diary. But Antonio Carpano of Turin, Italy, is credited with producing the first commercial vermouth in 1786, followed by the House of Cinzano, which was established in 1757 but didn't produce the Cinzano brand until several years later. The Martini and Rossi Company also participated in the pioneering of vermouth, establishing Italian-style vermouths that were red and sweeter. In 1800, Joseph Noy of Marseillan, France, introduced a new, white, drier style vermouth. Alta Italian and French vermouth differ slightly, the basic formula consists of base wine and mistal sweetened grape and brandy flavored with herbs, roots, bark, and flour. The manufacturing process is fairly complex. Herbs and flavors are steeped in the base wine and in the brandy. After steeping, mistal and brandy are blended mechanically in large vats. The mixture is blended, pasteurized, then refrigerated for two weeks to allow impurities to crystallize, then filtered and bottled. Other flavored wines include Lillet, Dubonnet, Aimer Picon, and Saint Raphael from France and Rosso Antico, Cocchi, Ponte Mies, Sonar, and Barolo China too from Italy. Chambéry, a premium dry vermouth from the French Alps, is made with a high-quality base wine and various mountain herbs, and it is the only vermouth with its own appellation d'origine. Vermouth is made in three key stages. Step 1 – Preparing the wine The quality of the vermouth depends on the selected wine. The vast majority of vermouths are made from wines that, are aromatically neutral, have low alcohol content, are made from a blend of several different grape varieties. In France, the selected grape varieties are generally located in the Gers region, Claret, Colombard, Picapoule, Ugni Blanc, Muscat, etc. Noy Pratt uses a blend of Claret and Picapoule to make its vermouths. In Italy, the wines are mainly sourced from Piedmont and Puilsaud, Sicily. The main varieties used are Muscat, for Carpano vermouths among others, and Trebbiano, Cinzano vermouths. Whether sweet or dry, vermouth is made from white wine aged between two to three years. It is fortified with alcohol or mistal, fresh grape juice mixed with alcohol, to 18% ABV. Step 2 – The addition of herbs and spices and extraction of aromas roots, seeds, herbs, flowers, peel, leaves, zest, as with gin, the choice and proportions of herbs used play a key role in the ultimate character of the vermouth. These two alcohols use the same flavoring extraction methods by maceration, infusion or distillation. The flavorings are then mixed with the wine. Almost a hundred different herbs and spices have been used in vermouth, with each recipe containing up to 30. The most common are, coriander, bitter orange, angelica, clove, cinnamon, absinthe, gentian, elderberry, cardamom, anise, vanilla, cinchona bark, iris, marjoram, chamomile and sage. Step 3 Final adjustments before bottling the blends resulting sugar content can be adjusted by adding cane sugar white vermouth, or caramel red vermouth. The liquid is then carefully mixed to ensure all of the vermouth's various ingredients are thoroughly integrated. Manufacturers may then decide to proceed with a final marriage stage in oak casks. The vermouth is left to rest for five to six months in casks with the bunghole left open to encourage contact with oxygen. In addition to geographical origin, vermouths are classified by their sugar content. Extra dry, dry, seco white vermouth contains 18% to 20% ABV, with sugar content of no more than 40 grams, litre. 
White, Bianco a golden colored vermouth with 16% ABV and a sugar content that varies between 100 grams and 150 grams, liter. Sweet, Rosso Amber Vermouth, thanks to the addition of caramel, reaching 15% to 17% ABV with a sugar content equal to or in excess of 150 grams, liter. Sherry. Rupert Croft Cook, in his 1956 book Sherry writes, there is sherry, and there are all other wines. Sherry is a versatile wine that fits the bill as an aperitif, a food wine, and a cocktail ingredient. Sherry is fermented like all wines, but after fermentation is complete there is an additional step in the production of sherry that separates it from other wines, it is fortified with unaged grape brandy. Like Spanish brandy, sherry is aged by the Solera system. Though this fortified wine ranges widely in color, flavor, and sweetness, there are really only two distinct sherry categories, Fino and Oloroso. Fino is the drier style, on the surface of which a bacterium called flor is encouraged to grow. Finos are lighter bodied wines than Oloroso because flor can't grow on a wine with alcohol content higher than 15.5% and Oloroso wines are fortified to 18% alcohol. Within the Fino category are the nutty dry Amontillado, aged six years after losing its floor, the darker, softer Amontillado, aged even longer, and he driest Fino Manzanilla, uniquely pungent because it ages near the sea, in the town of San Luca de Barrameda. Pale cream sherry is Fino that has been sweetened. Oloroso, fortified with up to 18% alcohol, is not protected by floor, and therefore is much darker in color, from gold to brown. There is a very thick, sweet style of Oloroso that some consider a separate class unto itself, called Pedro Eximenez, the great name, that is sometimes used as a flavoring additive in brandy and whiskey. Cream sherries are highly sweetened Oloroso of less distinction and less age. Palo Cortado is sort of a non-category of sherry varying from producer to producer. In Palo Cortado producers often blend the two contrasting styles of dry Amontillado and Oloroso. The alcohol content for different sherries varies with great subtlety, Fino, 15-16% alcohol Amontillado, 16-20% alcohol Oloroso, 18-20% alcohol Pedro Eximenez, 20-24% alcohol. The level of alcohol the wine is fortified to depends on the wine that is being made. If the winemaker is looking to make a wine that ages under a layer of yeast floor, such as a fino, the base wine is fortified to around 15% alcohol as this is the alcoholic strength at which the floor is happiest. If he or she is after an oloroso, a wholly oxidative style, the wine is fortified to at least 17% which prevents the floor from growing and therefore the oxygen is free to attack the wine with gay abandon from the start. Sherries such as Fino and Amontillado are made from Fino base wine, note the small f, to differentiate it from the bottled version, which in turn is made from grapes from older vines grown on the best Albreza soils. They are pressed gently, if at all, to yield a pure, elegant, free-run juice, low in impurities. Olorosos, in contrast, are made from Oloroso base wine produced from the fruit of younger vines which grow on heavier, clay-based soils and they will be pressed with more force to produce a coarser product with a higher level of impurities, body and astringency. This isn't to say Olorosos are therefore inherently inferior to Finos and Amontillados, just different. A winemaker certainly wouldn't be able to make a great fino from the oloroso juice but a true oloroso couldn't be made from the gentle pressings intended for finos. The Solera system. This is where it gets interesting. One of the keys to the production of sherry is the Solera system of maturation and blending. Sherry wasn't always made this way. It basically came about in order to ensure consistency. This system isn't unique to sherry and not all the wines are made this way but the vast majority are and it's worth examining before looking at the different styles of bottled sherries. Port. Port is produced in the Douro Valley in Portugal from several varieties of grape, including Tariga, Morisco, and Bastardo and some dark red varieties called the Tintas, such as the Tinta Cow and the Tinta Francisca. The two basic categories of port are vintage port and wood port. 
Vintage ports are aged two years in oak barrels and then bottled and aged usually for a minimum of 10 years, and often much longer, 50 or 60 years in a good vintage. The decision to produce a vintage port is made by the winemaker late in the season, between mid-September and mid-October, based on weather and the quality of the grapes. The wood ports, which include the tawny, ruby, and white ports, are aged in the barrel until they are ready to drink and are blended and mixed almost the way sherry is in the Solera. Ruby is aged usually for two years and is ready to drink as soon as it is bottled. Tawny ports can be aged for many years in oak barrels and blended from many vintages. The long barrel aging and occasional fining gives the older tawny a light golden color. Fermentation is short, usually 36 to 48 hours, and is halted by the addition of brandy when the must reaches the proper level of sweetness. Port-style wines are produced in many countries, including the United States and Australia, but all true port is from Portugal. Adding brandy to make port port wine doesn't go through a complete fermentation. Instead, the fermentation is stopped when the ideal sugar level is reached. The addition of spirits stops the fermentation by creating an environment where the wine yeasts can't survive. Winemakers add the brandy evenly into the port wine so the yeasts go to sleep calmly. Most port producers use about 30% brandy to reach the legal minimum of 17.5 ABV. Aging port wines port is stable after the brandy is added but it still needs time to develop. Legally, all port wines must be aged for a minimum of two years before release. Even then, it's illegal for a port producer to sell more than 30% of their vintage. This means that port wine producers are legally encouraged to age their wines for extended periods of time. Thanks for watching, subscribe and hit the like button.